Aiden. They love Terrell, big corners. Terrell Austin is talking about him right now and said that he didn't think he would be there at the end of the third round. Neither did I. I mean, you look at the athletics draft guide. I've got it in my hand here. Had him pegged as a second-round talent. Had him as one of the top 70 players in this draft. We know they love big corners. That's why, Richie, some of the pre-draft mocks you saw with these Rocky Asin guys and Byron Murphy, these are corners that are under six feet tall. And when they have found, uh, like Ike Taylor was a bigger corner. He's been, of the drafted corners, the best one of the Kevin Colbert era. So they know you got to get physical and be able to tackle. And you think with Lane's size, he should be able to come here uh, and do that. Yeah, and look, they still have Cam Sutton. They still have Artie Burns. You think I'm they've given up? Sutton. Do you I, think they've given up on either one of those guys? Would you, would, well, I'm asking you. I, I mean, I think I think there's still a chance with Artie Burns. I don't. Two see years it. ago, I, I think maybe it. something happened, maybe in his life or something that he just lost it mentally last year. I think it was a crisis of confidence. I don't know. I I, I don't. The people I've talked to over there, and you're around these same people too. The guy to me has not, from a work ethic standpoint, proven to them that this is means everything to him, right? I mean, you you want to have a guy that's fully committed to football that you know is going above and beyond to get himself back in the lineup. I saw a guy that after he got benched last year seemed to accept his fate. I don't think he was really pushing the envelope yeah, that no. hard. So you've got Artie Burns. To me, you know, you wash your hands clean of the guy if you have to. You don't want to make a mistake worse by trying to force the guy continually into the lineup. Cam Sutton's, Richie, one of these guys that I was talking about before. He was a third-round pick two years ago, and he's like a forgotten man to me. I, I struggle to remember sometimes that he's even on the roster. Mike Hilton's ahead of him. Right, and so they, they spent $26 million on Nelson. Hayden fell into their lap. At some point, they've got to find a corner on their own, uh, and maybe they, they found something with Lane, but the, the odds or their history would tell you that uh, they haven't. All right, let's go out to the phone lines. Let's go out to Joe out in Indiana. What's up, Joe? How you doing? Good. Thanks uh, for calling. All about the receiver. Okay. You're, you're saying uh, that they find this. If you did research on him, he has no hands. He's another Washington. He dropped a lot of passes at the Combine, even at school. It's a typical Mike Tomlin pick to me it is, just a no-name. You know, that there was that Boinkin or whatever his name was from Notre Dame. Why didn't they take him? Well, Joe, you know what? I know they really liked Miles Boinkin. They, they went to his uh, personal workout. They brought him here. They interviewed him at the Combine. This yeah. is the guy that they really like, too. Uh, maybe they just like this guy more. Daryl Drake said that he loves this guy. He fell in love with this guy. Um, and I guess that has to account for, for something. These Colbert, Tomlin have to trust their coaches. And they found, I mean, they found uh, Antonio Brown out of the MAC. So just because a guy's not a big-name, heralded player, that doesn't – Dante, you've got guys like John Stallworth who played at, at Alabama A&M. They don't all have to come from Ohio State, Michigan, and USC. Um, the thing that I, I just – I hope they're not doing this, Richie. The pick they, they used here was the pick they got for the Antonio Brown trade. He came from the MAC. Is there a little bit of sentimentality in play here where it's like – this guy reminds some people of Antonio Brown, and we're going to use this pick to find our new or our next Antonio Brown. It's odd that the numbers are so similar. The stats Height, are so speed, similar. Right. Um, I, I don't think that they Do you? I mean, they, really think that, that they would get sucked into that story? Yeah, we're going to try to draft someone that is the next Antonio Brown. Hey, if he is Antonio Brown or Emmanuel Sanders, how we've seen some experts compare him to a guy on your radio show. Compared him to Antonio right, we had Brown, Steve right? Steve Palazzolo on from Pro Football Focus, who's one of those strict analytical or numbers guys. You know, they don't have any subjectivity. They're not chewing tobacco at these pro days and getting coaches' thoughts. They're just strictly going by the numbers and the production. And he said, he remi Steve Palazzolo said, he reminds me a little bit of Antonio Brown. But the rebuttal back to that is if he's Antonio Brown, why isn't he a top five pick? In the draft. Yeah, that's, that's good. I just think that he might have been there later. All right, let's go out back out to the phone lines. We're going to go out to Brad out in Duncansville. What's up, Brad? Hi, Rick. Hey, Hi, thanks guys. for calling. Hey. Um, to answer your, I have three things for you. Um, the guy, uh, Dante Johnson, he played wide receiver, not quarterback. I thought I'd let you know. And the years are 15, 17, and 18. Okay. Okay. And um, my... 
my my two points are: Do you think the Steelers are going to get a tight end? And and the other thing is: Do you think they're going to keep Boswell, or are they going to keep McCrane? Okay, I think they're going to they're going to let both of those guys kick their way onto the team. I would imagine, right? It's preseason and training. Yeah, and they paid Boswell roster bonus. I think it's his job Boswell, to lose. Yeah, I agree. You know, that's what I would think with Boswell. Uh, as for taking a tight end, there's a need at tight end. Um, there's a need at other other areas too. Edge rusher. Uh, these are areas that they might have to address because where's the depth? Like we talked about before the show, where's the depth behind Chickalo, um, Dupree, you know, Watt? I mean, where do you go after that? Yeah, most of these positions like corner were a big need when the season ended, but they signed Steven Nelson, and I don't think Steven Nelson is going to, you know, convince anybody that he's Darrell Revis, but you invested $8 million a year in a player. And outside linebacker, Richie, you have T.J. Watt, who I think is a superb player, but you've got Bud Dupree in his lame duck year and a special teamer behind him. I mean, you're, you're one injury away from really being, you know, in big trouble at that position. And I thought in the draft, with all their picks between the first and third round, four to start this thing, that they would have found a pass rusher, an edge rusher by now. Chase Winovich was there for that second pick. For the Steelers. Are you surprised that yes, they didn't pick I him? I am, because I know how much they liked him just based on some of the conversations I'd had with people. He was someone that had been on their radar going back to when the draft process started. And I thought with, with a 66 pick, they would have considered that a heist, a, a, like highway robbery to get him with that pick. Yeah, I, I heard the same thing even from Winovich camp. I heard that the, that the, they, the Steelers were really high on them, too. So, all right, we're going to take a break. Back with more of your phone calls and maybe some of your tweets coming up next. Stay right there.